Hey guys, so we're heading off to Salon Privé to look at some nice cars and we have Janine, Julie and Colin with us. You're allowed to say stuff. I know! <laughs> <laughs> What kind of cars are going to be there today? Or is Everything this Everything that you can think of, probably. Okay. So it's not just vintage cars or brand new cars, everything. Yeah, it's supercars and classic cars, but it'll be everything. Chris's parents are coming. Ooh. So you can imagine it's a special event. Yeah. They've been invited and they're staying the whole weekend from Friday to Sunday. How fantastic. Yeah, they're very lucky. Well, lucky and I guess they have nice cars, so they get invited to all these events and people put them up in hotels ah. sometimes they're asked to bring one of their cars or to put it on display sure i can imagine what they're like yes last year his father's car won the best car award did it oh wow there's a guy who has 50 ferraris all 50. limited yeah all limited editions and he's young so he's in his 30s late 30s or early 40s and his father <laughs> um, and his father wouldn't let him add more than 50 so he says you have to sell one if you want to buy another one oh, so like a handbag situation <laughs> 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 <I> mean handbags <laughs> and uh, um, well the funny thing is it's me and shoes and me and bags as well but I never end up selling <laughs> yeah, you know yeah. never no shoes but I went to Aston Martin because <coughs> I'd been putting normal fuel in it. The guy who sold me the car said, just put normal fuel. And the emissions light came on saying the emission system needs a service. So I took it back to Aston Martin and they put it under tests and they said, well, if the emission light is on. It could be sometimes a faulty sensor. but." So we'll order some sensors and replace them anyway because we don't want you having this alert but there's nothing wrong with the car, they did all the tests and as doing their test the car told them that I'd be putting normal fuel in it. Oh, it told so, on you. So, yeah, so she politely, they're so sophisticated and so polite, it's amazing. She said, um, by the way, once in a while it's good to put um, high octane in it because it keeps the engine healthy and I was like well the salesperson told me to put normal fuel I always put high octane in all my other cars and she yeah. said yeah stick with high octane ah. and uh, that light disappeared after that oh, and wow. never came back so then I rang her and I said can, shall I still change it she said yeah I think you should change the sensors because we've ordered them and we're not going to charge you Ferraris <laughs> making noise, yeah. and uh, so I went back and <coughs> they took booked the car in. And when they were about to change the sensors, they realized that Aston Martin, the factory, had sent the wrong sensors for the wrong model. <gasps> and they were like, "Oh, we are so sorry. We are just." They, they were mortified, and I was like, "This happens all the time with all the other cars, yeah. dealerships. They never ever say anything." So they filled up my tank to apologize for the inconvenience and the time I had to spend to get nice. Nice. I was like, okay, that's very nice of you. And then the next time I went um, there, there was a bag that I really loved, my bag issue. Yeah. <laughs> so I looked at the bag and uh, it was, I have so many bags, so I couldn't justify spending 800 pounds on another bag. So I was like, oh, I really love this bag. And uh, they, gave it to me for free for my inconvenience. Really? And I was like, this is just amazing customer service. Oh, that's fantastic. <laughs> and everything that I asked for, like wiper blades, I wanted a sat nav update, everything that I said, they just put it without any charges. I mean, all these things are paid items. Yeah. And with Porsche, they always charge you, even if you're buying a car and you say, I want all these things added, they will charge you extra for each uh. item. These guys, no questions asked. It's brilliant customer service as far as keeping people. Yeah. That's amazing service. And they are so polite. I'm a little old fashioned. So I like the fact that they don't call me by my first name. 
I hate it when you go to these places and they say, oh, can I call you Ethan? No, we're not friends. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and on the phone as well, you call customer service somewhere they're like, oh, can I call you by your first name? No. No. <laughs> thing is at school, I don't know if you have the same thing in America, but in, at school everyone calls you by your last name, so all your friends, or at least back in my day, right. and only your close friends will call you by your first name, but everyone else in your class will call you by your last name. I think it's a very a very English thing, or very European, yeah. um, to refer each other by their last name, because um, in the US it's always first name, but anybody, you know, any teacher or anything is always, you know, their last name. You never refer to them by their first name. Well, that's interesting, actually, because some of my friends, and maybe this is just a guy thing, I did refer to by their last name sometimes, and sometimes their first name, like, it, it was just contextual. It wasn't based on how close friends we were. Right. Yeah, true. I mean, my friend Chunky. Yeah. That was just a fun <laughs> last name. Yeah. Great last name. Yeah. I think that's probably more common in the U.S. is making up nicknames yeah. that rhyme with your name or if something associated to it. Yeah. Sure. Oh, so like, um, so Dave, there was lots of Daves and he was always referred to as Dave Long as if it was one word to the point where we went to his friend's house and they're like, is Dave Long coming to our party? You know? like, yeah. Oh, yeah, there's like a photograph of the... I know, this is what I love about this because when you get there, you see the same sign on the left. So it actually oh. displays that here. So. That's brilliant. Yeah. Show off. <laughs> yeah. Quick, yeah. pass him. Yeah. <laughs> but that's a brilliant navigation to show this is the image of where you are. You're going straight. My friend's dad is, I guess he, his career is an engineer, but when his son was born, he decided, all right, I'm going to restore, well, basically build a Ferrari. And so he said, all right, I've got 16 years to it because I want it ready for when Alex is uh, old enough to drive it. Oh, my God. He oh. missed his target. And I don't know if Alex ever actually got to drive it. <laughs> but the car is done. It's amazing. Oh, my God. And, uh, and he's done a Porsche as well, I think. If I had a garage, I would start one of those as well. But in England, it's very difficult. You can't start a rebuild job in your front gun. <laughs> yeah. Right. Especially if it's going to end up taking me 16 years. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and... venue, uh, the Salon Privé event at the Blenheim Palace. 
unfortunately it's overcast and it's cold and I'm wearing a very light blazer freezing but the cars are nice Thank you.